afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of the Reich, Defender of the Fatherland, here to deliver more glorious propaganda to your eyes and ears. We'll be having a one one right here on Langroske, which, by the way, has received some changes, mostly around the northern part, for example, right here around the cutoff. Slight changes there. We shall be watching Panzer Grenadier angreifen once more, fighting here for the first SS Panzer Division Leitstandarte versus Jessalyn, fighting here for the United States of America and the 2nd Infantry Division. But again, round those will change here a bit farther out here, the cutoff point now. And as in some regards, a bit harder to sort of hold down for the opponent, but also for the defender. Some slight interesting changes there. There's also been a slight path opened up here, yes indeed. Though it's been securely guarded here by a man with a 50 caliber. Got a rifle squad waiting for orders. Otherwise, there's lots, not actually been a lot of other changes to the map. It's just basically here to sort of make things a little less punishing on the northern player. Rough and pushing up there. Two rough and squads there. Commander's box standard for Panzergan and Guy from in fact seeing a straight move here for mechanized assault. Yawul. And a dual pioneer side here again from Angreif, and he seems to be fond on that, at least versus the Americans, sort of that way, grabbing more territory, also maybe moving ahead, securing some points with barbed wire as well. Schnell, Heinz, die Stahlgedracht! Stacheldracht. I think actually Stacheldracht, yeah. Sorry about that, my German in some departments is a bit lacking, still. By the way, right moving up here, reassuring troops heading towards the center, no barbed wire from him. No screaming of hands hurting and put some more up. Rifleman holding points. Third gun, second gun is got here running for Angreifen. Rifle squad ready for third unit arriving. No sign of commander choice so far by Jesselin. Oh, and they fail to make to the building. The pioneers have said they get caught here. Out in the open by the rifleman. M1 Garands firing away. New Magnus is moving up, engaging. <laughs> Oh, hiccups. Not hiccups, but reaction on troops. <sighs> We're firing in, by the way. Nope, they can use folly fire from inside a building. Not something necessarily all people are aware of, but they can do so. They can do so, which is probably where they are a bit more effective with it. Having a bit more time to press, but there we go. D2 went down in a volley fire there from the M1 carbines. An alternative actually made to the pistol, since the American army rather realized you're a lot less bloody likely to shoot yourself in the foot with a carbine and a pistol, which was largely one of the reasons they came back with it, I believe. It actually shot some very low caliber rounds. Not very powerful rounds, in fact, which was one of the complaints against it, since it was generally found to take a few more shots to actually take down one bastard with an M1 carbine than, say, with an M1 Garand. But it was lighter and easier to carry around, and also noticeably more foolproof than, say, a pistol. So it became rather popular with rear line units, and I believe also the Airborne. Then it's forced away, MG42 arriving here for Angreifen, so far Angreifen is being Angreifed, being pushed back here by the Amerikaner Schoenteufen, the Pioneer sneaking in there, or less sneaking, less going in there, guns blazing. And there we go, an aggressive move for the car off point, but right here coming under vicious fire here from the Americans, already there, Fritz went down, in a vain attempt to secure that cut off point, and there we go, moving up here as well. Jessalyn so far keeping up pressure quite nicely. Striking back, and he's already taking up here, heading for the platoon command post. Knocking in the door and screaming for some lieutenant to come out. We have a lieutenant reporting in for duty. And there you go, Lieutenant Rives. Gunadita versus Reifman, fighting a bit on the slope. Backman there, and Jack took a shot to the got, but there we go. Getting off a few good hits and Rives taking up positions here. Catching the Fritzes up here in the open. By the munitions point in the south. Not looking too good there. Another rifleman down, falls down onto the road. Gunners replace the position there, but we see rifleman surrounding here. This could actually end up getting very ugly for the gunners, and this could easily turn into a tomb. There we go. Down to three men, low health. No, he should take up position here by the door, by the door. No! Ah! A mistake there, I think. And light machine guns, well, he could really have punished Angreifen right there if he stayed at the door. I have no idea what he did. In fact, to the broader side, he should have stayed at the bloody door. Waited for them to come out. Threaten to huff and puff and shoot the door in and throw in some frags. Either way, we're seeing an M20 here following up 
rapidly for Jeselin. The M20 utility car. He's falling. Oh, Riven getting caught. So, no, oh, managed to get by. Now it's just the MP40 firing in from Pioneers. And Yimikuba, more Riven running, more M1s. More plings as magazines empty out. I do love that sound. A very nice little detail there from Relic. Special troops moving out. The M20 has arrived, getting the armored skirts up. And rolling ahead. Like, well, a small scout car. We are noting the Lighting Mechanized Company is up here for Angreifen. Gun is waiting up here, linking up with other troops. He's moving up a little bit more focused force. He realizes he could get easily overwhelmed, and then the Grenadiers retreat again, apparently. Not entirely sure what happened there. Only Ford sitting up. He's very concerned about the cutoff point, but of course, he's rather rapidly losing ground. He's having a bit of a hard time here, initially. Jessalyn so far keeping up nice pressure. The M20 is only going to make that worse. Turning into the MD crew rather exposed here in the shrubbery. Sadly, your flowers were never known for their great bulletproofing capabilities. In particular, not versus the 50 caliber. Otherwise, the hippie movement would have been had a much greater threat. Ravni holding up, then it is, and Pioneer's moving in. And there you go. Keeping in range here, by the way, ensuring he doesn't get the range here in the Panzer Fast, which are one of the greater threats of the M20, or well, any scout car. So, nicely handling there. Of course, the Pioneers are less Panzer Faustable. So, of course, he just gets up close and gets violent. Interesting enough, there's been no response here from the Lighting Mechanics Company, so we're an ambulance. Right now, one option which could very well work out for Angry is actually get a scout car as an upgrade with the auto cannon. There'd be very little that Jessalyn could sort of do to resist that, except maybe carving out the crew here with a bazooka. Infantry has been chosen here. Mortar half track available, already, including rifle defensive structures. And now, we're noting a Panzer out there, Kanone. Yeah. He's going to lay down some thicker fire there versus Jason's armored car. A capture point is being overrun. Pioneers moving up, scout coming in right. Oh, no, actually the lieutenant holding up from the building as well. BAR and 50 caliber fire, a very potent combination versus anyone not encased in thick panzer. And there you go, nice hit on the scout counter. That's going to force Jason to have to pull it back for repairs. Rapidly and most swiftly. And looks like Angraf and then might be able to sort of more s aggressively push back. Already Jason's sort of running around circles and doing nasty things. Though interesting enough, he's not been laying down any mines, say, with the scout cover, which could have caught up any further uh, initial armor or vehicular movements from Angreifen. Which could have tripped up, say, a early scout car or a half track or maybe an armor rusher for that matter. Since he's got a mechanized assault, he could catch a Stugi or a mechanized assault call. Rather than being pushed back, pinned to the ground like bugs as the MG42 unleashes a veritable torrent of bullets. Good to go. Ooh, nice flank here, we got the pack 40 ready. But already the lieutenant is moving in and not good. And there you go, popping smoke, and there you go, flank up behind the pack 40. Can he turn swiftly enough? And sadly, there's no troops within reinforcement site. This is bad news here, Van Gyven. The rest of the position has collapsed. There's not enough infantry support there. He made a bit of a risky gamble there with support weapons. And he got caught and punished severely here. Go ahead. A heavy loss right there to Angreifen. And the lap stand on here within the first few moments of the fight. Uh, he's definitely going to be difficult to And we're also seeing here that Jesselin's feeling very confident. He's moving straight on here to the battalion command post, not bothering with company. Certainly, I do feel company command is getting a bit ignored. Maybe they're a bit rude, who knows. But there we go, counter-attack goes in more boundly. They might be able to get the pack 40 here. A bit too slow to sort of take it. There we go, lots of guns now equipped with that machine guns. Having up the firepower considerably here, he's going to be able to present a much more serious threat now to the infantry of Jessalyn, and so the pack 40 crew is most assuredly dead. And there we go, Pioneers taking advantage of all the commotion on the left side, sort of make a move for the fuel point. Good job there. Angreifen, good as Arbeit. Oh, Panzerfaust going off here. If you can catch it with a pack, he might have a chance here. It looks like that will not happen. Looks like that will not happen. Major Tom here, making a good move forward. Boys, you ready to roll out? 
and grabbing lots of light machine guns now from the weapon rack having sampled up quite a lot of munitions and Zolta seemingly as always ignoring getting something on the Lieutenant, though again, it's actually something you can do, though again, it is something not And there we go, a mechanized assault group by Van Gyven. Quick follow up here from the reconnaissance unit. Most specifically, the panzer grenadier reconnaissance unit was, in fact, quite common that the ones in the half tracks were actually just used as a armored, well, mechanized unit, sort of attack and push through. They did have sort of more scouting purposes, but generally they weren't swim mags or otherwise, and used scout cards for those. The infantry generally was used to sort of support the scout cars or were basically used as regular infantry to sort of attack and clear positions and all that. So not so uncommon to see the 250 used like that. There you go, nice rifle grenade, tearing up here. They could very well do a lot of damage here. Ambulance took a direct hit there. And there you go, light machine gun drop. Ooh, he actually had a quick, maybe with a browning. Oh, silly me then, my fault's there. Oh, he did not charge into the rifle and he did not pick up the browning. A missed opportunity there of quite some large portions, I would say, by Angrive, and he could have cleared that out. Well, he's got himself a light machine gun, maybe even. A bit disappointed there, Angrive, and that was a good opportunity to miss the set. Now we've got the Major here playing all cool now. The Browning. No, the pack falling moving a bit too far, but there we go. Half tech moving in. Getting up close with the Panzer gun on the other side, and the Sturm Gewehrs, though, taking shots at the farthest away targets rather than ones right next to the half track. Still doing a nice bit of jump deck. Already six hills veterans won. And the major here also firing away like a maniac. Probably thinking back to the days in World War One, charging through the trenches. The German trenches, that is. Or maybe it was the Belgian ones. He never could tell. And they're going to cool down. The scout car doing quite nasty work there. The Panzer is having a bit of trouble dealing with that. And there we go. A Sherman out as already. This is quickly turning hold. We have Van Gyven. Pack 40 down. MD42 down. What's more lacking in the anti tank department? Panzer Faust though. M20 once more damaged. No high explosive rounds here. So that makes things a bit easier for the. Oh! M20 down. Finally, it's cooking. As the crew proudly, well, probably more horrifyingly proclaimed. Still, that's a lot of equipment there. That Jesslin could take and turn against his crowd opponent. That's time to turn. And Gyphon, another Panzer Faust. There we go, a nice bit of engine damage. Another Panzer up on the way. He's got plenty of fuel. Could it be he's trying to aim here for the Tiger move again, you know? It's a bit old, and certainly against an opponent like Jesslin, it could prove to be a bit fatal here since Jesslin could easily dominate the field quite handily. Our opponents are there we go. One anti-tank gun now in the hands of the United States Army. Making good use of the mechanized assault group, though he might want to pull it back for some reinforcement and repairs. And maybe also met some healing for the Panzer Grenadiers who are starting to look a bit bled out. Never mind, direct here from the Sherman, drives by there with a 50 caliber on top, and I fear there will be no survivors. There we go. Tot. Sturmgeschütz aus Film E, ready. Oh, Rifeman down and a Browning left behind again. They do seem to be a bit butterfinger, those Rifemen. And he's... He's a... Pick it up, man! There we go. Two machine guns now that gun in the squad. There's advancing through here. They're taking heavy casualties. Not entirely short. Young is thinking that was a bit silly. And sacrificing another squad to get the MD-42. And I don't think it will work. So that's just basically a waste of a gun in the squad, if anything. And Guyven here making some nasty mistakes. Just in finding a way. Shot failed to penetrate. Might have been a high close round, if anything. Another shot failed to penetrate. I definitely think he might have switched to high close round. Which, surprisingly enough, not very good versus armor. There we go. Pack 40 fired up as well. Forcing the Sherman back. That was a bit of a wasteless use of infantry. But, uh, well, MD42 now recruited as well here by Jesslin. MD joining up the other equipment. Pioneers here fighting bravely, and there you go, the Major wants more opening up. Joining up with his compatriots, Corporal Punishment, and the less aptly named Private Parts. We are 
Dishing out the jet. Damage the crowds. And there you go. Large assault going in here. Large machine guns here again. No. Two LMGs and a Browning as well. That's it. And there you go. The Major's moving up as well. But he's getting caught up as well. He's just getting absolutely hammered down. Corporal punishment. Private parts left bleeding. Possibly from some certain parts. Pack 14. Storm gets here. Finding covering fire as well. Stu getting one kill. Then he's marching to the falling back here. They are taking heavy casualties here from the Sherman. At the same time, the two kind of aren't too far either. Due to the presence of the pack, they lost and they go down to one man. Dieter legs it. Rather narcissist engagement right here by the Central Victory Point. Lots of men dead. And bleeding. I'm going for the one for makes a push here for the right hand side. Sherman getting repaired. Infantry moving up. Interesting up. No double upgrades with the rifle and Brownings. Ah, oh, target ground, he's an idea what the enemy is and he's actually firing out what he expects us to be. Actually getting some kills there in the name of Germany. Some light progress being made here uh, versus the Americans and actually time for the mid-game analysis. Current situation, Angreifen is under a lot of pressure, he's taking quite a bit of damage, although he's still doing some damage as well. The note, there's still a noticeable kill advantage here to Jill Jesselin. I was about to say Jillalin, blah. That's horrible. But right now, it would definitely seem like he's playing versus the for the good old let's just get some Tigers strategy, which to a certain extent can work, but again, you know, it's sort of a bit more easily punished, in particular as the Americans, but interesting enough, he's not going for that. He's apparently not expecting, you know, he should have seen the mechanized assault groups, he should have known he's going for a Tiger commander, and by that point, you know, he should be preparing for the Tiger eventually, that he seems like he maybe thinks he can be able to finish off before the Tiger arrives, considering the sort of pressure been able to up on the fuel, plus what else he's seen, which is certainly not a bad idea, so he's getting a howitzer basically to just bomb his opponent into submission. And certainly that's one thing that can happen because it's going to take some time and certainly soldiers have not been able to do enough damage to really get the Tiger out here. So this is definitely a bit of a risky strategy by Angarf. On the other hand, if he can't get it, I mean, on the other hand, if Jesselin keeps the current composition he has, he's actually going to be vulnerable with only one pack 40, not even a single bazooka, and well, one Sherman, which is not necessarily going to be the best Tiger deterrent. I mean, if it was, the Tiger really wouldn't be worth much now, would it? So it's a bit of a risky strategy. I mean, you could consider also adding in some assault guns to sort of quickly or well. In fact, one of the things that Angarv is short on is infantry. And he definitely should get some more in that department. And a second pack would certainly not hurt either, sort of add a bit further anti tank power. Getting back in that MD42, though, again, Jesselin is holding up the front line. Some men hiding up here in the bushes with a machine gun. Always a good little trick. Point sales are being secured. I mean, overall, things are a bit sort of pressured for Angreifen. He certainly needs to Angreifen and push back. So you should probably try and ignore the sense for a bit, sort of trying to push up the flanks, try and draw in Jesselin into some kind of engagement that will favour Angreifen. As for Jesselin, well, more army in the long term, particularly more anti tank would be a good move. Though again, he's just aimed for artillery, so he definitely needs to sort of push hard for his opponent, try to keep him away from the fuel as much as possible, and try to finish him off before Tiger arrives. Otherwise, again, he needs to sort of set up preparing for the Tiger Rush. If he fails to do either, I mean, he's going to probably get steamrolled. Because, again, the current composition would be he'd leave him a bit vulnerable to a Tiger, to put it mildly. So that is something to keep in mind. I mean, half the game is generally being able to read your opponent correctly. Well, maybe maybe one-fourth of the game is being able to read your opponent correctly and sort of, sort of outthink that in terms of strategy. Or at least set up some appropriate counters for that. But either way, back to Angreifen, back to the fight. Veteran 3 here. They were to be able to fire off a lot of bullets there. Quickly getting some kills in front, he's pushed by the Sherman. And there we go, tank through one squad. Rifleman here in defensive positions, and somehow not suppressing the Grenadiers, and they're actually getting killed here. So looks like the gun is there definitely three and two machine guns there are definitely going through them. In fact, there we go. Jack is on the run. Now I've got moving up. And he actually retreats here. Maybe he was worried about the house, which is fine down here in the centre. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Stuart firing again here. Not really seeing a lot of direct action. Keeping a bit back here is clear, worried about the pack. 
Jesslyn took from him, which is understandable. I mean, a good few hits there, and that scoot is going to go down. There we go. Hands up, a canon if fires of eight. Stug almost knocked out. The enemy is taking our territory. The lap standard in name, so because it was actually part of the bodyguard unit for Adolf Hitler, by the way, as a little fun fact later on, though, it would be formed into a frontline unit sent off, and would later be replaced by two sort of other bodyguard units, formed from the Kohlstadt stand, which would then eventually also be formed into independent army units, the Führer Brigade, more specifically the Führer Brigade, Führer Grenadier Brigade and the Führer Big Light Brigade, which would later on themselves be formed into divisions, although that would be by late 1944, early 45. You have a tiger to deploy. So, small fun facts there. And there you go, Tiger available. He's almost got the field. He's, all, he's a bit far off from the manpower, though. Still, Jessen's going to be a bit open here. Oh, attack across the ground here versus Tomka Schutz. Always a dangerous thing there, although can't seem to hit over. Panzer Getting Panzer gonna deal as well here. Maybe with some Panzer section tow. Who knows? Attack round again, making good use of attack round by the way. Nicely done there. Not a lot of players know you can for example shoot through hedgerows with it, though note you can't shoot through buildings with it. We are losing a sector. There we go, good use of flying back with a pack 40 through it. Then he's in a bit of trouble. There you go, nice Panzer Vars here, the Sherman's damaged. But sadly there's nothing to really pursue them with, rather than holding up your position the Browning. Then he's forced back. Pressure increasing. Panzer's moving on. He does in fact get Panzer X for them. He's using very intending trying to get the Sherman at the same time. He's going to get a risk of moving back to get clocked here by the Rifeman side. More Rifeman to reinforce the positions in and all then part of his holdings. He's rather rapidly getting pushed back. And the major wants more sent running. His attempt at heroics not quite succeeding. Oh, direct hit from the house on this dude, almost knocking it out. Good lord. Good lord indeed. Otherwise, so the Howitzer was not able to get off any really good kills. Got a resource being cluttered here. He might be aiming for a Jackson or a Sherman. He might be expecting now, really, you know, to sort of think, all right, my pony must be going for a Tiger soon. I must prepare. I'm on my turn, hope so. Rifleman, oh, Panther is crossing up versus Rifleman. And they're going to do supporting. Lots of machine guns in tow there. But again, the fuel point is being harassed, but he just needs the manpower, just needs the manpower. Veggie 2, there we go. Bit more armor and a slightly higher rate of fire. Though seemingly no ability to actually hit the bloody rifleman. And there you go, a tiger has been dispatched to support the first SS in their assault on this series of farmlands. But can they succeed in bringing through? There you go, veteran feet for the major. There you go, seems like these also have been deducted from Jesslin. And he's in fact getting here a Jackson tank destroyer. Pack 40 force to fall away. Pioneer single with the MG42. Left side will be secured as well. And there you go, Tiger shooting a not very impressive shot right there. Slight roll back there. Big push coming. Definitely looks like he switched back to our pissing around if they were there, but I think he was. German forces tracking on 300 points. Germans using mid hit points. A bit more of a standoff now, now that he knows he has a Tiger. That's simply going to force Jesslin to be a bit more careful. Then again, he was actually a bit foresighted here. And actually got a Jackson somewhat in time. 
That's going to be by the way, on the pack 40 here. That's going to be a problem for any armor. And so he the tank destroyer. I'm glad from seems a bit more confident now. And there we go. M36 Jackson. Assault here pushing back the MP42 to firing away. Pioneers and Panzers kind of these firing into the side of the Rifle Rifle Strike moving up here. Ancient Knife has got plenty of munitions flowing back. He's not upgraded a lot of his rifle and orcs, even in the VS on two through that machine guns, which I think he could do a bit more honestly. Alter's got access to several barrages then to crawl down upon the heads of the crowd he wants to. And right there, he's more or less already revealed his Jackson tank destroyer. We should also then cause his opponent. Oh, there we go. We can see the target charging up here. <coughs> Sherman coming under fire. Jackson turning around. There we go. Good hit from his 90mm gun there on the target. Tiger already down to half health. Target weak point. Could be the target. No, no. Target weak point. Almost got the tiger though. We lost an infantry unit. They got wiped out. And there we go, the Tiger went down to combine fire from the Jackson and the Pack 40. Good job there. Although the guy from was a bit too confident, he should have pulled it a bit further back now. He probably would have saved it, so that was a bit of a mistake there. And certainly has robbed him of a lot of momentum and initiative in that one group. And there we go, the Pack 40 itself also wiped out. Shamming in to finish it off, taking no chance there of Unguy from getting it back. And it is utterly overextended here. Taking heavy casualties as well. Barely holding on, if anything. And the Stooks not really doing much support here. I mean, it's he really hasn't been able to get much out of due to the pattern. And then later on, the Jackson. They still got some kills, I suppose. Looks like Ungarden is a bit sad. There you go, pack wrecked, and it's no more. Jackson being repaired. By the way, it had the exact same gun as the Pershing. Little fun fact there. 90 millimeter gun. Though noticeably less armor, and certainly also none on top, which actually made it rather vulnerable to things like air burst shells which act in some cases cause the tank destroyer crews to actually pull back from the fighting due to the worries of them getting shredded from top. So another little fun fact there. Rough and budging here. Oh! Just really punching fire there from the Grenadiers. MG42s and Brownings proving to be quite the unwelcome guests. But there you go, nice hit from the Howitzer. Almost warming out the entire Grenadier unit in the process. But Angreifen soldiers on. Angreifen soldiers on despite the punishing casualty being inflicted upon him by the United States Army. Shamu's in there. Oh, almost got hit there with its own artillery shell. There we go. One rocket actually connected with the Sherman. And looks like he actually lost something. Jackson charging in here, bit of a bowman, he's probably trying to get the suit by the same time he throws himself to the panther tricks, which he would actually be quite vulnerable to, and if he then also gets a target weak point off, he could immobilize along the... No, no, mind, Sherman arrives to the rescue as well. There you go, shot. Oh, there you go, target weak point though. Ah, but the panther are forced away, and showing the Stuke does not have a chance of sort of getting knocked out, which is really bad. He's trying to save up for another tiger, he's got a fuel cache up here. So sadly, it's not going to give him enough, and there we go. The shoot's about to get knocked out. Pulling up behind. Oh, never mind. The fuel cache offered not a little refuge there from the 90 minute gun up the Jackson. And here, see the dangers of perhaps of occasionally riding too much in the Tiger versus an opponent. And I almost suspect he might be trying for another Sherman of anything. Then he's moving up there trying to Panther Faust it. But Panther Civil should have supporting and I'll already force away so he can't really do much. Finish the DD instead coming under fire from the Sherman, which is just pummeling away and getting a second Jackson here. 
Cleveland taking no chances with the crouch. And Amgard now getting back in the fight. And there you go, you just see the gunners getting absolutely murdered. The Panzerfaust has only taken them so far. Now he's getting another Stu E of all things. I was not expecting to get another Stumker shots. I was feeling E. That was a bit of a surprise there, to be honest. Gavni getting blasted into the dirt. And there you go, Tilikold in here. On the remaining unit, as they pull back, he's barely got any infantry. They've lost one squad on retreat, and that's apparently the one with Browning. Now, this is certainly reminiscent of the old company views, where it's seen moves like this. I mean, before the Americans or any of the artillery will say you wouldn't see anything like this, but right here, we did see a bit of a repeat move there. That's only a good old reminder of the first company of heroes. And certainly a good reminder why you might want to keep your base parts spread out, so you can always move around there, sort of secure that. Reinforce elsewhere. Jackson charging in. Stu here clearly doesn't have much of a chance there versus the Jackson. Situation turned is falling apart here for Angreifen. And he's actually calling a second priest. Feeling rather confident, just wants to blast things into the dirt. I mean, Angreifen is more or less crippled. Barely any units left. Barely any territory left, barely any income left, barely any anything left. And there you go, these engines are actually going through the Panzer to a certain extent with the M1 carbines. Heavy artillery fire here. Another pack down. And I suppose another thing we do say is basically have a creeping barrage run through the base, so they don't think either house has got enough point. kills to do that. Either way, I'd say this is largely GG, and there is nothing left here for Angreifen to do. That's it, fellas. The capture point is under attack. The supply line just got cut off. There you go, finds Dugi down, and there we go, game over, a loss to Germany, a victory to the United States of America, a bit of a brutal engagement here, a bit of a shorter one, but in the end, Jesslin preve prevailed, largely due to sort of leading the game from the beginning on, a few mistakes here and there, from Angreif, sort of slowly snowballing in something big, but he got the Sherman Tiger, then he sort of really, you know, got aggressive, he got back, he pushed back, and then, rather by mistake, to a certain extent, he extended and lost the time, and not Pulling back, firing off then, and getting it wiped out, which rather left him very open. He tried to set up for another Tiger, and to some extent, I think that was his problem. His strategy was very much around saving up for a Tiger, and Jesslin, to some extent, was able to sort of counter that, though it was rather close, I also feel. But on the other hand, had he maybe gone for armor earlier, I think Jesslin would actually have been a lot more trouble, but instead he didn't. And he said that actually allowed him to build up something to only handle one big tank, was just the pack and the Jackson. So that is something to keep in mind there. I mean, a good deal of focused fire can bring down a heavy tank like the Tiger. So that is something to keep in mind there. In terms of command usage, he made all right, though. No mortar half tank, no rifleman defensive structure. So not so much from there, if anything. But beyond that, I mean, sort of reasonable effort from both. But again, and guy from I think he should have gone for some taking up, gone for a Panzer for some Stukes, sort of that way, plays his way through, I think. Had he done that, he might have been able to follow up with a Tiger and that way get back in the fight. Instead, again, you know, it's a bit risky now to go for a heavy armor with a Tiger, and, you know, you can risk getting your face punched in if you try for it. So in the end, you know, game over, but not quite enough, at least not to so German. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. Hope you got some ideas for your own game. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? Share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in a replay and provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.